Okay. So, um, so yeah, welcome, welcome to our last session. And this session is really for you all to share with each other um, things that you've put together, um, and for everybody to get a chance to, um, to to comment. So, I guess before we start, um, anybody have any questions or anything that you wanted to bring up before you get started? Was it fun setting these up? Hopefully. I hope so. And then I know one person said that you needed to leave early because you have something you have to attend. Who was that? And now are you here? Oh. Um, okay. I think it was Riley. Okay. Um, and she just had to go off because she couldn't hear anything. Um, I could hear her a little bit. So um, she's back on. Riley, I think you're on. Can you unmute? Okay. Well, then let's let's maybe get started with um with somebody else and then as soon as Riley comes back on um so uh so Brittany you unmuted does that mean that you're willing to yeah. go first the baby's napping this is perfect timing okay okay I don't know how long you've been oh you, you know what I have to so do I'll go first okay so I'm going to um I'm going to give I'm going to make you all co-hosts um oh. He just so you can oh no <laughs> that's okay you can okay okay so you can share your screen you can share your lesson and just describe okay. what you did all right haven't done this for a while okay so zoom one second oh it's right here so how do i share my oh right there okay Okay, can everybody see that? Yes, perfect. Okay, usually um, I do like K2 um, when I am teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so and it, I said growth mindset, but it's more of like a positive outlook. Um, the little lesson that when I was doing some researching, so I was trying to look for a different book that I haven't heard of before. Um, and it's called Rosie's Glasses. And it's about a little girl. Um, who's just having a really rough day and it has no words to it. So the kids kind of get to determine what she's feeling or what, and everything's in black and white at the beginning. And she has to go to school and her breakfast isn't what she wanted and, and everything's in black and white. And then on her way home from school, um, she finds these glasses and when she puts them on, everything is in color and it's their magic glasses. And so it just makes her day better. So I just kind of wrote like, the teacher briefly introduces the book um, and once the teacher opens the book the students will notice that there's no words read the book twice and then during the first time um, have the student share with the partner about what they like what they think's going on and then the second time you read it um, you're going to stop on each page and all together kind of discuss what's going on and then after the story the teacher is going to have her own set of glasses this teacher in particular where I was listening found this lesson uh she had had a bunch of leftovers I, I know I always collect things at birthday parties or whatever because mm -hmm. I'm like I can use that in my classroom mm -hmm. or my kids would love that um and she was like oh I really or I the example I use like oh shoot I forgot my lunch now I can't eat but instead of and then I put my glasses on and say well I forgot my lunch today but I can try something in the cafeteria and maybe it's something new I've never had before um so just to try to change their mindset and to mm -hmm. something more positive and then I would take to have like a little set of glasses and then if students having a bad day they could go grab their glasses and if they need some help thinking positively wow yeah it was just it's just a cute little lesson and I'm like and what a quick like uh check in with a student if they go and come in and grab the glasses right away if they want to play with them okay but mm -hmm. Um, maybe they're just having a bad day and they need some help seeing things more positively. 
Yeah, and that's a great way for the you know, for the little teacher. Yeah. yeah, well, and also for the littles to start kind of understanding, you know, how to think about the way they're feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how we can how we can make choices to change the outcome of, yeah. or you know, we might not be able to change what's happening, but we might be able to change in the future the way we feel about it or the mm -hmm. way we feel about things. So that's all. No, I think have you tried have you been able to try that out with the kids? No, yet? I yeah? I have no, I'm at home. Ah, right but, now with uh, the baby. Yeah. Well, I mean like right now I'm right. not working. Okay. But um yes. but I this love will that. definitely be something I put in my back pocket for a mm -hmm. lesson later for sure. So I know you know a couple of you all, a couple others of you are like K2 teachers. Um um can you can you comment? Mitch, can I get the name of that book again? I'm sorry. Was it Rosie's Glasses? Yeah. Look, if you're Rosie's not going to pay glasses. attention, I'm 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 sorry. I can't I I can't allow you to. No. You know, Mitch, I I love you dearly. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for letting me ask. <laughs> I wanted to compliment Brittany on using a wordless picture book. Um, that really just like ups the accessibility rate for kids, right? And even I taught fourth and fifth grade when I was in the classroom. And even my fourth and fifth graders loved those wordless picture books because they could take so much from and infer so much from the details of the pictures. And it, it I mean, it takes no effort on your brain's part as far as like decoding the words. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this might seem like a, an activity for younger kids, but I think even up through like sometimes even middle school kids, oh, absolutely. what I work with now would really enjoy that concept they might not put the glasses on they might be embarrassed but they would love <laughs> the concept of it so mm -hmm. yeah or they might love to wear the glasses i mean middle schoolers you, know, you never yeah. know <laughs> you never know <laughs> so i teach adults and they would love this I, they pre-service teachers they would love this I, I i agree with you it was it christina that was talking this is just a beautiful idea in fact i'm buying the book right this moment it, it looks nope, super i've already cute, got I've it in my it. cart it's already purchased yeah. Wow. Four left. Everybody better hurry. <laughs> well, I wish I was the author of the book and I could get a commission, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'm a... so bummed I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Rosie's glasses, though. Rosie's Noted. glasses. Added, no, this was added this was a, to my cart. Yeah, it's a really <laughs> cool lesson because um and give you know a raising awareness of whoever. And we've been discussing this not just for younger kids. It could be for middle school kids or or adults and just raising awareness about you know being able to pick out what your mood is and kind of like using a a, a trick to get yourself into a, a a more resourceful state or a better mood right mm -hmm. there's a video on the rm i think but on youtube of the picture book and it kind of like it's hard to I was kind of like squinting to try to see so it wasn't a great video but it was a super cute book i definitely we We'll be putting that in my classroom library when I go back to the classroom. Yeah. Great. Great way to start. Awesome. And Riley, I think you have to leave early, right? I do. I, I'm sorry. My my go. computer wasn't cooperating. Yeah. But um, yes, we have our Christmas concert tonight and we need right. to be there by five. So, so Brittany, is there a way you can stop sharing? What, were you able to access mine, Mitch? Yes, I can now. Okay, good. Okay. Sorry about um, that. So let me. Um, so. Uh, I'm trying to stop on sharing. Oh, okay. Pause sharing. Stop or stop video. sharing. Right. New. It should be able to stop sharing. You know, so I may be able to. At uh, participant security, stop video or mute. Oh, stop participant sharing. Okay. Anyhow, I okay. did it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. No, thanks. Uh, Riley, you can share. Do you know how to share your screen? Okay. I'm opening it up. Um, no, I don't. Okay. Because um, I could um do i just is it just a matter of like pushing a button right there should be something that says screen share but i can um oh yeah okay 
um, optimize for video clip? As, if, if you have a video, then you should optimize for video clip or you should share, share sound, but you don't have to. Oh, well, yeah, I probably won't play the videos. Mine, my lesson is really similar to, um, to Rita's. We had shared, we had the same mm -hmm. book that we were going to use. Okay. Um, okay. And then, but when I go to click share, oh, here we go. Tell me if that works. Um, it's not shared. Ah, oh, there it goes. It's, um, I think it may be a slow connection. Ay, ay, ay. You know something? What I'm going to do. Oh, there it goes. Is it working? <laughs> yep. It's there now. Yep. The power of you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And sorry, I kind of missed what's going on. So we're just kind of doing a quick run through. Yeah. Yeah. So that okay. everybody can kind of understand what you did. Okay. So I actually taught a lesson, basically this lesson, but um, I added in a cool piece that Rita shared. Um, so thank you, Rita. I, I loved your idea. Um, but I would start with um with a just a mindfulness exercise we use go noodle a lot for brain breaks um and this was just one that i thought would be good um it says get back on track and it has the kids focus on their breathing and then this so these are um if you use class dojo it's free for teachers i'm not sure if it's free for parents but it's a really cool resource it's how i keep track of classroom management in my classroom but they also have a ton of videos that have to do with um you know empathy and growth mindset and not giving up and they have a video called the magic of mistakes and they have goal setting and stuff so um this video is in particular about one of these characters. Her name is Katie and she learns the power of yet. So she's having a really hard time on her math, whatever math assignment thing that it is. And, um, and she learns the power of yet and how she can grow her brain by um, even when she makes mistakes. And then I would, with my class, I would go through just a series of questions that we would discuss and we sort of did this after we read this book called The Magical Yet. I actually read this on the first day of school. Hmm. And um, then I have a up above my smart board, I have a big poster that's a big bubble that says dot, 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 yet. And so we can refer back to it often. Um, but the questions are, what should you do if you are stuck on a project, math problem, or worksheet question? And these kind of go with that um, class dojo video. And think of a time you were afraid to ask for help and why did you feel afraid and what could you do differently next time? So kind of discussing that as a class, then we would read this book about, um, this is about a girl who actually, not just one girl, but in several scenarios where um, these kids are learning the, the power of yet, like how to ride a bike or um, how to do an art project or play an instrument. And this is the poster that I have that's up above my smart board. Um, so what are some things you didn't know how to do, but you do now? So this is the idea I got from Rita is um, she had the idea to put sticky notes of things that the kids um, didn't know, don't know how to do right now. And then later on, you know, have like chart paper over here that shows, um, when they overcome that challenge, you know, oh, now it's something that they can do. So it's kind of this action of revisiting it throughout the year and, oh, you didn't know how to do that, but now you do, right? So let's move that sticky note over. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, and then some think pair share, you know, at the carpet. Why is the word yet so powerful? What's something that you didn't know how to do yet? Discuss with your neighbor. And then kind of along the lines too of, um, what's something you didn't know, but you do now. So like maybe you didn't know how to tie your shoe when you were in kindergarten, but now as a second grader, you do. And then this is just a, the discussion guide from Dojo, but there's also a, a take home piece that I thought would be great for parents. So it kind of gives them some prompting questions to talk about with their child, just as some more encouragement. And then the last one is just the magic of mistakes, you know, could be the next lesson in the series, um, but they have a lot and they're really great and they're pretty short, um, you know, quick discussions. So this whole lesson would probably only take about 20 minutes. Hmm. And that's it. Yeah, I, I like the way, you know, you've taken 
you've you, you done a completely different slant on the things that you know like we covered for for adults and you made it really accessible for kids well yeah i mean it's just so great all the they there's so many resources out there um mm -hmm. you know that we can access it's just finding ones that fit you know for your age group for your level kids um you know for your specific classroom mm -hmm. so yeah they it i really like it i really love this book and so I was wondering, you know, does anybody else, for, you know, who is familiar with teaching, like K2, can, can you comment on this? What are, you, what are your thoughts as you went through this, as Riley was going through this? Sounds like a really great lesson, Riley. Really appreciate it. And I do want to get that, that book, The Magical Yet. Yes, it's a good one. And it's yeah. fun. I always keep it at the front of my classroom so the kids can read it, you know, during buddy reading or silent reading or borrow it for their book bins. So it's good. Thank you. I can't yeah. see you guys if I'm screen sharing, right? <laughs> um, I think on the bottom of your screen, well, you don't have to screen share anymore. So you can stop okay. the screen share. Okay. I'm just to my computer, okay. which is, feels weird. Okay. <laughs> there you are. There we are. That was that Linda who was just talking. I think I recognized your voice. Yes, it was me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Yeah. And thanks, Rita. Shout out to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for all the shout outs. Sorry, I had my camera off because I have this brand new puppy sitting on my lap right now. And oh, oh. she's your camera on. It's on. Here she is. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. She is rambunctious, though, let me tell you. <laughs> what is her okay. name? Her name, we just actually named her. We could not figure out a name, um, but we just decided to call her Aria from Game of Thrones. So she's going to be Ari for short because she's a wild little crazy one, this one. She's <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Really cute. So if I'm a little distracted when I'm sharing, but she is why. <laughs> you be distracted. She's worth it. <laughs> thank you. Well, so Riley, also, thank you so much. And I know, you know, making an effort to do this before you have the, um, you know, the school musical is, you know, uh, the concert. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. It was a re really, really interesting lesson. I, I, yes, you guys. So thank cool. you so much. Thank you for letting me jump in. And have a good evening. And um, and, and if you, you know, obviously you have op access to the spreadsheet. Um, yes. and you'll, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll set up the archives also. So if you want to see the other lessons, you can see it on the archives. Yes. I really would love to go through them. So that's awesome. Thank you for, thank you for setting it up this way so we can access each other. So that's great. One cool. second, honey. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm happy to share next too. Cause like I said, like she mentioned, ours are pretty, very similar to each other. Okay. So um that way we can kind of go through it a little quicker um let me figure out if that's okay sorry i don't want to jump on in on anyone so it's okay with me okay <laughs> all right so let me share my screen oh let's see sorry i'm on my personal computer and let's see optimize has a big exclamation point, which is not a good thing usually. Um, you don't really need to optimize. Um, you just, you know, I guess you could just share. Or yeah. If you can't share, I can. Yeah, for some reason, like when I, let's see. Oh, yeah, it's making me like open all my settings. I think it's because I'm on okay. my computer and I probably don't have it set up right. Okay, so what else? So I think... This is your lesson, right? Yes, that's my first one. Okay. Yeah, I'm the first right. one. So just tell me to tell me when to advance. Okay, perfect. So uh, you can advance. So the first one, um, as I was making this, I was uh, kind of thought, you know, I was, I was planning it to do it just as a lesson, but then I realized that this also could be something really cool to share out to parents, just maybe introducing it at the beginning of the year, um, just to kind of get them familiar and have a more visual for them to learn and maybe use at home and use the same language at home. So this is a 
um, slide that we always put on our meet the teacher um, at the beginning of the year, our team. And it just kind of, we talk a little bit about growth mindset. We read giraffes to can't dance in the very beginning of the year. And we tell parents about that. So it's just a way to introduce it, open mind versus closed mind. Um, and so this is just a little thing that we like to share out. So I thought this was cute to share. <laughs> you can go ahead to the next one. Okay. Um, you don't have to play this or anything, but this is just another, she had mentioned Go Noodle. And um, we use that a lot in kindergarten. Um, this is one to just get your minds ready to learn. Um, it's the swirling bottle. So it gets my kids to calm down and realize that sometimes their emotions can be shaken up. And as mm -hmm. we learn to breathe and take breaths, things start to calm down. And um, I play this one for my kids all the time and they love it. So <laughs> you can go to the next one. Again, just our essential question and our objective um, about embracing new challenges by learning the power of yet. Uh, again, this is just a video that she just shared. Um, we had collaborated on our last call. So that's why we're so, mm -hmm. our things are so similar, but really cute video. It's like two minutes long. So it's really great for the little ones. Yeah, well, I actually got a chance to play this video too. So um, I thought it was I thought it was really cool. Yeah, and there's a bunch. I think there's at least five episodes if you go onto Dojo. If you just type in, right, I, yeah, yeah, Dojo Growth Mindset. And so I always play um, the echo, oh, and I linked it too in the. If you look down in the speaker notes, I linked mm -hmm. that as well for anyone who wants it. <laughs> and then the next one is just a read aloud. You can click on it to play for your class if you don't actually own the book. Um, and um, like she just had mentioned in the last one, so you're going to read it. And then the next activity would be uh, stand up, hand up, pair up. And they would stand up, find a partner and share things that they have felt like they can't, they couldn't do yet, but mm -hmm. then they could eventually overcome. So in the book, they mention. Um, you know, when you were a baby, you couldn't talk, you were babbling, you were, you couldn't walk, you were crawling. And so, but eventually you learn to walk and just even simple little things like that, especially because I could teach kindergarten, mm -hmm. uh, it can seem like there's a lot for them to overcome. And so just finding examples of things that they feel like they couldn't do at some point, and then they overcame them and just having it, giving them the opportunity to share. Um, and we do stand up, hand up, pair up all the time, and then just have them change partners three or four times. So hmm. And then the next one, so this is what she had kind of mentioned. I, I'm a very visual person, so I just played it out. So there's two different options that you could do. Um, you could brainstorm ideas and write it on an anchor chart um, of things that they can't do yet, just to kind of get them thinking about things and wanting to tackle those challenges. And then um, the other thing that the op second option is you could have them, and I actually did this with my class, um, write or draw in my case, um, a, something that they feel like they can't do yet. So there are some examples, riding a bike, tying your shoe, reading, um, and putting it on a sticky note and putting it on one side of a chart or a board um, and just labeling things we can't do yet. And then actually moving sticky notes throughout the year as they learn to challenge those or, you know, tackle those challenges um, and just you know, encourage them if they want to write a sticky note or draw a sticky note and things that they did at home, we can celebrate that as a class and just get excited for each other. That, that is probably very powerful. Yeah. And then you can go to the next. And then this was just another option, maybe for um, older kids or at the end of kindergarten, towards the end of kindergarten or middle of kindergarten, um, just things that they cannot do, but things that they can do, kind of the same thing, but on paper. Um, and then the last one is just a cute little song about the power of yet, um, that you could play. So I actually did this with my class and, um, it went really well and the kids were really engaged. I've been teaching kindergarten for eight years now. And every single year I have at least one student that just gets so down on themselves. Um, they feel like they can't do something and they say, I can't do it. I can't draw this picture. I can't write this word. And so we, I mean, the power of yet is like, we talk about it all the time and specifically actually funny that we met today. I had a little girl in my class this year who is very much like that. And 
we read this book last week um, and did this lesson. And today I caught her saying this. She goes, I can't write this number yet. And she said it out wow. loud and everyone <laughs> heard it. And I was like, yay, the magical power of yet. And she's like big smile on her face. And usually she'll like break into tears. Mm -hmm. So it just, it was a big breakthrough. So. Wow. And um, just as, you know, as I was um, listening to you, as you were, you were talking about having the kids, you know, talk, you know, talk about the things that, that they've already accomplished that they could, that they didn't think that they could do or, um, and then congratulate each other. That's, that's a real good kid version of that cookie jar exercise that we all did. Yeah. So I think that's a great adaptation. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, you know, it's, and it's not the same. I think, you know, a teacher could use both lessons, you know, both years and, and Riley's, you know, um, so, you know, I don't think that they're exclusive. Um, they, they tackle that issue, which, which the kids, I mean, we all face this th through the rest of our lives, you know, right. Um, so having the kids see it from different angles, I think is, um, uh, you know, could be, could be very powerful. So I'm, I'm also curious, like, from some of you all as, um, you know, as Rita was, was going through this, what were your thoughts? Very good, Rita. Mine is so similar. I know we were all in the same kind of a group and we were talking about it last week. And so, yeah, yours is really, really good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank and you. I, I really appreciate it. Yep. I don't have the giraffes can't dance, but that's on my list now. Yes. Yeah. And I think I was, I was kind of going through, I can't remember whose lesson it was. I was peeping at some friend's lessons after I posted mine and somebody created, I don't know what it's called, but it's like the, is it the Bitmoji classroom or something? I'm sure we'll see it. And they have a bunch of books and resources. So that was really cool. I'm, I'm excited to see that one in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I will say um, that Giraffes Can't Dance is, is a, you know, it's a book that I, I mean, so my daughter is a two-year-old and I read it to him. You know, I, it's, it's just, it's kind of cool. Well, it is, it is a cool book. Um, I was going to say the, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, the part that I like is the sticky note. I think Riley had it too, that it involves, it brings the kids more involvement. Like say, oh, I get, and I get, they love sticky notes. Um, and then they get to move their sticky note over when they get to do something. I love that aspect was, of it. Wasn't that cool? Yes, I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I, I did too. Thank you uh, guys. <laughs> for me, I was really liking the idea of using a sticky note because it shows ownership for the kids that they own. I couldn't do it yet, but now I can. So I really like that idea. Yeah. And if the kids can't uh, write yet or they can't draw yet, you know, you could always have things, um, you know, stamps or something that they can put on so that they don't, you know, so that, that, that they're not inhibited by their inability to, to write or their inability to draw. So yes, I love this. That's the sticky note idea and make, and having the kids do that. I, I, I agree. I, I, I love that idea. That was my other thing. I forgot to mention at the when I do teach these lessons, like the, the power of yet at the beginning of the year, I always, right after I teach the lesson, I somehow incorporate like a directed drawing or something. And I start doing it in front of the kids. And then I stop and throw a big fit and like, <laughs> I can't draw this. And I just make a big deal about it. And they like, they look at me like, oh, and then I like stop my stop away. I can't do it. I give up. And I like make a big deal. And so, um, when it comes to drawing, my kids know, you know, that, that it, even though maybe some of us can't write yet, we're going to try our best to draw. Cause that's the only way we'll get better. So. Hmm. Get modeling it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. And thank you for your comments. Um, okay, who wants to go next? I think Molly, Don, you guys want to go? Sure. Sure. Awesome. I can share. Okay, do you guys see it? 
Yes. Awesome. So like I mentioned last week, um, we actually were asked by our principal to talk um, about some of the stuff that we've learned in our class and make it very user friendly to our staff so that they can use some of the stuff. So we called it MindShift 101 for teachers. Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to start off by talking with our um, teachers about the power of our words, because our words have so much impact on our kids, as well as how they talk um, to themselves and about themselves. So we liked the words of perhaps I can or I can't do it yet. And really talking about growing your brain. There's a wonderful little video that we would show um, to our staff right now. I'm just going to get past it because you guys can watch it later if you wish. Um, but here's our Bitmojis. Um, just like the other lessons that we've talked about today, we love story time with our kids. That's what we do, mm. especially in the grade school. Um, so here we found some books that are great um, kind of for I can't do it yet, the power of yet, um, drafts can't dance. And then we actually did a direct to draw um, a giraffe for our mm -hmm. kids. Um, and just some other books that we have found um, that we enjoy. All of these are linked, so you can click on them and go to YouTube um, in case you don't have the books in your classroom library like me. Mm -hmm. um, Molly? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I use a lot of these in my classroom from Go Noodle. Um, I have a Go Noodle account, but I found these links for YouTube of the Go Noodles that we put on for everybody if you wanted to use it. Um, my kids really do really well with the bear breath. Um, hmm. And then also on the bottom underneath the chalkboard, our our school uses a um, curriculum called Second Steps, and the song that um, my second graders really like is the Stop, Name Your Feeling, Calm Down. Um, he's, he does this little robot dance, and then they, they actually do motions to each other when they <laughs> see each other flipping their lid and getting... Um, unregulated they're like stop and then they're like are you here and they like try to um help each other realize that you're not making the best choices um so that's a song that they really um enjoy and we we will stop and just play it so when we made this resource we wanted to make it easy for our teachers to use these things so that they can just make a copy of these slides and add it to their own um, canvas page and just quickly access these things that they can do with their classes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Alicia. So, that's a lot of resources. Those are great. Um, to go along with what others have said, we also use the um, Class Dojo Growth Mindset episodes towards the beginning of the year. Um, at least I do with my first graders a lot. And then we also do the perseverance one and just teach the kids that it's really important to just keep pushing through and to keep trying and not to give up. Um, so those are just more resources as you guys have already talked about just growing our brains. In fact, um, a funny story is I have been saying that to my kids and one of them today got stumped and he's like sitting at his desk and he finally gets it and he goes, I'm growing my brain. Wow. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so just keep working on having that positive attitude. Just remember that you can do it. It just might take longer, more time for somebody than others. And just keep work, keep trying it. Don't give up. Okay, so this one, um, these were just some tools that we found. Um, I have some of these tools in my room, others use other items to help kids when they're um, having big emotions or are unregulated and need to stop and reset. Um, so all of the little items have links to Amazon. Um, so we thought we would be able to share that with other teachers so that they could find these items that they could use in their classrooms. So the um, the, the one next to the headset, the, the ball type thing, how yes. is that used? 
I use that as a breathing ball. Um, it stretches out and goes in. Um, it I'll go grab mine. Um, yeah, go grab, go grab mm -hmm. yours. I think mine's in a desk somewhere. Um, have you not seen that? Mitch? No, I've so, never seen that. And I went oh. to Amazon and I looked at it and it's just a picture. So it's like, hmm, I oh. wonder. Okay, so oh. it's just this ball right here. It looks like an atom. And as the kids right. pull it out, uh huh. so they're breathing in, ah. breathe mm -hmm. out. And they're just using this motion mm -hmm. to go with their breathing. So they slow down and just helps them kind of focus and calm down. Ah, okay. That is, that's really cool. I like that. I imagine the other kids, the other, I've seen the kinetic sand, um, sure. uh, you know, uh, the little chips are like little yoga chips. Mm -hmm. so you can have the kids pull one of those out and they can do that yoga move to kind uh -huh. of help ground themselves. This desk is one of the coolest things I think. Um, I don't have one in my room. Molly has one in her room and I find myself always going over and standing at it when I'm in her room. <laughs> um, the bar is really nice and a great way to kind of get kids to calm down a little bit and do their work. So this is, it's a standing desk for kids? Or? It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it has that wobble bar on it so that mm -hmm. they can still move if they need to have some type of action. Um, yeah. I, so they I put their foot on that bar and they just, yep, and it their it just swings. And mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Oops. Oops. Yeah. I clicked on it. Oh, look, it got more expensive this week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's amazing how they think it's on sale, but they jacked the price up a little bit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. And then this one is one of my favorite things that um, happens in our school. And I wanted to share it with some of you guys um, because. I know that some of you are in Washington and this um, assembly is actually available across the country. Um, it's the NED assembly. All right, Alicia, go for it. <laughs> um, I'll have, I missed it this year, but we wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, NED is basically, we call him the yo-yo guy. Um, he comes in and shows kids basically the power of yet and you should never give up on never I love it never give up encourage others and do your best that turns for Ned um totally giving kids the confidence to know I might not be able to do something right now but I can later I can but yeah, but yet um and on his website he has some great lessons for k2 as well as three six that really go um, in the classroom following along after his assemblies. I have yet to do the lessons myself, um, but they're great. His also big thing is he sells yo-yos to the kids and he does tons and tons of tricks, kind of shows kids how to do tricks with the yo-yo. And then they sell yo-yos and you get to deal with yo-yos in your classroom. Mm. Um, but the fun part is, is that you don't have to pay for the assembly. No. They come to your school technically free with the understanding that all of the sales of the yo-yos will pay for another school's assembly hmm. it's like paying it forward so mm -hmm. like we got the assembly for free because a different school sold the yo-yos to the kids and then what are sales so it's not like they say you have to sell this much it's just however many get purchased mm -hmm. And I like it because then it is fun to kind of watch the kids try and figure out how to do some of the tricks. Mm -hmm. And you just hear them go, well, I can't do it yet. I can't <laughs> do it yet. So I think that is it for us. That's a lot of resources. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, the, you just, you covered an awful lot with with that lesson. And, and again, the, the idea of, getting frustrated and sticking with thing, you know, sticking um, with something, you know, perseverance um, or grit is, um, it's a, it's a lifelong lesson and we, and we always need refreshers. So uh, yeah, that, I, I, that re really hits it well. 
And who else can comment? I love all the resources. I mean, give me a break. That thing is packed full. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I think it's a great resource and set up just very professional. Thank you. It's very great. Thank you very much. So much information. Thank you, all three of you. Yeah. And good luck teaching your, t you know, th you know, the other teachers in the school too. Hope it's, you know, my guess is it'll be very successful. Okay, who wants to go next? I could try to go. Okay. I don't know if it's working still, so let's see. All right. Yeah. Can you can you click on it or anything? I, it I can't. I still don't have access. Okay. So I clicked share and then it comes up to um, add people in groups and I don't know who to add in there. Um, well, you, if you, if, if you add people, if you type in, um, well, so I'm in, uh, you know, my email address is Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. You know, something, let me, let me put it into the chat. It's probably the easiest thing, right? Mm. Linda, at the bottom, is there a spot where it says um, people with the link can open it? No. Mm. Let me go back into that again. Um, let me it says, let, it let says me... copy the link. It says restricted, copy the link, general access. So, So I'm sharing my screen. Can you see my screen? Linda? Yes. Okay. So you see in the top right hand corner where it says share? Yes. If I click on share, yes. then I have something that says people with access and I have something called yes. general access. Yes. If I have, have that. Okay. Under general access, if you, it probably starts off being restricted. Yes. But if you click on this downward, you, you should have an option that says anyone with the link. Okay. So let me try that. Um, okay, restricted, anyone with the link. All right. Okay, and then click. Then click done. D right. Okay, can you get in there now? Okay, um, I just refreshed. Let me, let me find you on here. Um, I'm second to the bottom, I think. Yes, yes, I got, yes, it's there. Oops. Yay! Like it. Okay. Oh my gosh! Um, here we go. Okay. So then, I can, um, let me uh, share my screen and let me actually uh, view Zoom there. That's, you, can you see okay. this or should I zoom more? Can people see this? Can you guys see it? I don't know, I can't hear from anybody. Okay, can I you can see it? Okay. Okay. So this is my actual lesson plan that I am going to do this lesson um, next Tuesday. So um, it's going to be with third grade. Um, it's going to be with three special needs third graders that I have. And um, the lesson is perhaps I can, and it's a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, or a perhaps I can versus an I can't. And really, I want my students to understand that their thoughts help determine their reality. Um, and often they will shut down and say, I can't. So we want to you know, help them to have a better way of dealing with that and have that growth mindset of perhaps I can. So as we scroll down here, um, I'm going to do some. Can you guys see me? Um, a little bit. I see you over on the side. Yeah, I can see you. Okay, good. Okay, okay. so I'm going to first start with some mindfulness exercises with them, and then I'll go over some calming strategies. So um, one of them, I'm holding this up. Can you guys see these things I'm holding up? Yes. Uh, what I can okay. do is I can, let me stop share for a second. Okay. Okay, so this is the breathe like a bear, and it's 
full of coming strategies. As you can see, I have a many wow. pages marked, but this book we've been using for a few years in our school and every classroom has one. The general ed teachers don't use them as much. I'm a special education teacher, um, but I use it in all my little mini groups with kids and it's really powerful. It's really good. There's a few of them that I particularly like, but this is a really good book. Um, another thing that I would do for calming exercises is called um, take five, or we call it the five finger breathing. And so with that is we just have them go breathe in and breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. And you know, the pace that is good for them. And this gives them that time to calm down, relax. We call it five finger breathing. And it's it's a really good one. Another one that we like to do here in our in our classroom is called the lazy eight. So they can make number eight on their lap or they can stand it up, you know, and do it the, rec, the way a normal eight would look like. But basically breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out as you go down. So um, either way, but if you do it on your lap, then people in the classroom won't see you because your desk is covering it. So that's nice. It's a nice little calming strategy. You can also use the five finger breathing underneath the desk so the kids can do it anywhere and no one has to notice, you know, what's going on with you. Um, I like that we already had somebody doing the breathing ball. So that's on my list too. And it's breathe in and breathe out breathe in and breathe out. So that's one of them that we will do. And then um, as far as my lesson goes is that we will um, use whole group first um, and talk about our accomplishments that they've done. And then after we've modeled the whole group, then we will go with partners and I'll partner them up. And since I have three kids, I'll be the partner with somebody. And um, actually, so let me go back to the lesson here. Oh, OK. OK, I'm a, I stopped sharing. Um, so, right. So you, we talk about the mindfulness exercises and the calming strategies. Yeah. And, and then, then um, yeah, then we'll do a whole group and we'll just be able to like show how to um, demonstrate, like share out loud um, accomplishments. And then the students will be able to get into little groups because if I just have my kiddos go into little groups right away, they won't understand what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So we'll model it first and then they'll do it with groups. And then we'll model things that they haven't learned yet uh, as a whole group. And then they'll go into partners and do the same thing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do a T chart out in front of them and they're gonna share out accomplishments and I'm gonna write them. And mm -hmm. then they're gonna also share out the not yet's and I will write them. Then when it's time for our step six to make awesome jars, they're gonna be able to look at my T chart and this will give them some writing practice because writing is not like a forte of theirs. And, um, but they're gonna be able to write what I wrote down and it just gives a little bit more academic time in there for them too. Mm -hmm. And they'll be able to write their accomplishments because I'll have written it on the T chart and then they can copy it and put those little accomplishment slips into their own individual awesome jars. And I love all the ideas that we got last week, because I don't know who I know. There was a lot of people that gave lots of great ideas. And I'm just like, oh, I can use this. I can use this. I can use this. And I just loved it. So thank you for uh, last week. And thank you all you for your good ideas. And then at the end, I would remind my students that their thoughts help determine their reality. And I would ask them, what are they telling themselves? So I want them to think about how they are, you know, talking to themselves and that we want them to get to saying, perhaps I can instead of the shutting down. So that's my lesson. And have you had a chance to try any of these yet with, with any of your kids? Oh, yes. Yeah. The uh, I haven't done the awesome jar. But mm -hmm. yeah, today we did mindfulness in our groups and calming strategies. And we have been talking about perhaps I can. Um, 
and I do have a lot of kiddos that are shutting down in their classroom. So um, that is, this whole course has been very, very good because it's given us new, new strategies, new things to work, new things that can help us work with our kiddos. Hmm. Fantastic. Other comments? Let's be quiet. Um, this is the first time I have a breathing ball. My girls do, and they got it at like a carnival thing. I had no idea what it's for. It's really cool to like see and be able to use and apply at home. So thank you. So Sarah, I know that a lot of people do not have breathing balls, but if you just demonstrate with your hands, mm -hmm. then they can, you know, you pretend to have a breathing ball because we don't, of course, don't have breathing balls all over in our school, but you can pretend to have one. And do yeah. the same thing with your hands. So yeah. I just think it's funny that I had one and I just I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Cool. Other other comments? Because I thought that was, you know, it, it was a very an incredibly practical lesson to um, you know, get kids to act through things that they can't do things that they can't do yet and to, you know, change their whole mindset and to understand that their minds determine the reality. So I, I, that, uh, I thought that was great. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Who's next? I'll go. Great. Thank you. I have never shared my screen before, so this will be interesting. Let's see. Well, we don't get... blow up the world. Right. Right. Okay. Oh, there we go. You got it. Um, okay. I don't have a classroom. So I thought, what can I do to best help this teacher that I'm mentoring? Um, mm -hmm. It's just to create, you know, a source of a resource for her. So what I did is I kind of did it as an introductory lesson, as if she had never heard of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried to put links. I stuck with YouTube just so for okay. copyright issues because mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't know where this is going to be shared right so i started here i put there's a really good video on how am i feeling mm -hmm. and it goes through this little monster and he talks about how he you know be in the moment be present know what your feeling is is okay mm -hmm. and then down over here is a great six minute video for the teacher to explain really what mindfulness is to give her some background mm -hmm. Um, and I put the, the times below it for her. So she knows with the idea being, if she finds one that, um, uh, fits, she's got a trauma kiddo in her class. And if she finds one that fits her to a T, um, when she needs to reset, then she could have it up on a desktop and ready to use all the time. Yep. You know, some, something easy for her to have. Uh, this one was great on staying focused. And it's, um, you know, kids today, these videos, they are, their brains are just going, going, going. Then you've got ADHD on top of it. And this has you follow the yellow ball and there's all these things going all around and you're supposed to follow, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is really, it's, it's a good one. Have you ever seen, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, I did it ahead. anyhow. There's another really interesting one called dancing bear video. And, um, you know, it asks somebody to pay attention and count how many times people are passing a ball to each other. And mm -hmm. people are so intent on watching that ball being passed from person to person. Then the video stops and, you know, it asks you how many times and it says, and how many people notice that there was a dancing bear and nobody ever notices that yeah. there's a dancing bear in it. It's just kind of, it, yeah. it, as you did that, it was kind of, it reminded me of that video. Exactly. Um, because it's her and she has this trauma kiddo in there that mm -hmm. throws some pretty good tantrums. I put, uh, calming my emotions. Mm -hmm. And then this one really goes into using mindfulness to cause your, calm your emotions. And then the last one kind of wraps it up. Mm -hmm. And I loved this one that I found because it went through the five senses, like you were talking to us about, oh, about mm -hmm. each of your senses. And then this book I found Zara's big messy day. 
-hmm. And that one's really good. It's, you know, about using mindfulness um, when you're really having a bad day. Mm -hmm. And so that, that kind of wrapped it up. And have you, have you shown this to the teacher you're shadowing? I did. I, yeah, I had my meeting with her today Mm -hmm. and um, showed it and I emailed it to her and I, you know, they have, they have to be super careful. They're a small Catholic school. So I was real, I had, this took me some time to find the videos that didn't mention meditation that did not have right. little characters, yep, <laughs> you yep. know, mm-hmm. to stay away from those Eastern religion, you know, innuances. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so she, they have a little spot where they go back to reset. And I told her, I said, you know, any of these would be safe that you could have up there where she could not feel like she's in trouble and be able to reset herself mm-hmm. and so we'll see you know, she's she's pretty inundated with behaviors in there and a little overwhelmed so right right i'll have to check in with her again in another week or so well i hope it works out these are great resources just yeah. try not to reinvent the wheel there's so much out there there you really know? is yep yep uh yeah uh, thank you amy so you're welcome anybody you know any thoughts on using using these resources in your classes from anybody? Because I, I would think that those resources could be used for, you know, anybody who wants to teach their kids how to reset. Um, uh, and, you, you know, you could you could do a quick, you know, these look the the videos are between like three minutes and seven minutes i think was the was about yeah. the longest right there's yeah. a yeah there's a really good one in there and it's called the body scan mm-hmm. and it just teaches them like it was exactly what you were doing with us at the beginning of the lessons mm-hmm. about being still and paying attention to each portion portion of your body a little mm-hmm. bit at a time and how easy you know to have that kind of on your desktop somewhere and when mm-hmm. they're everybody's crazy and you've told them to be quiet three times instead of giving them a mark and telling them they're going to miss recess right. you know of right. going you know what we all need a reset push the button everybody quiet let's let's do our body scan you know yep. and just giving them a chance to to calm and mm-hmm. be mindful so yeah that um and i actually use a lot of those myself when I was in Mexico because um, I was in Mexico uh, last week and you know everything that could go wrong during the week went wrong and it was like after two or three things go wrong it's like you know something let me just take five minutes and just you know one of the mindfulness exercises and then okay and then I'm ready for the next two or three things to go wrong and they and sure enough they did you know, I was thinking, Mitch, um, you know, as Amy was talking about the the book, Zara's Big Messy Day, but I was thinking about, you know, really in education, time is our most valuable commodity, right? Right. Well, when you're talking to teachers about, well, you have this problem, try this. A lot of the pushback is, well, when am I going to have time to do it? Right. You know, it's, and we all know that if we had any involvement in education, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, it's another thing. You know, I just, I just want the problem fixed. I just hear that a lot in my current role. And, mm-hmm. um, and I was just thinking, wouldn't it be great if we used these texts, any of these great texts as mentor texts for our ELA lessons, right? And so you read the book once, maybe you teach a reading lesson from it, like theme or main idea, right? And then, you know, you use that same book again for a writing lesson as a mentor text. And then also it can be used the same story for a cell lesson, which is what we're all talking about here. Mm -hmm. Um, And just a way to say, well, actually weave it in with content. I don't really think that like um, cell, you know, our social emotional learning lesson type things, I I think in isolation is not nearly as effective, right? Is if we can weave them in, of course, artfully when the behaviors occur, but we want to really be proactive and preventative. And so if mm-hmm. you weave them into your content, whatever that may be, um, I'm thinking ELA, obviously with all the books, but mm-hmm. um, then it's a natural um, kind of like a touchstone, right? So you read Sarah's Big Messy Day as part of your ELA lesson. And then when the when the blow up happens two days later or something, we can go back to that and say, remember when we read that book? So anyways, those were just some of my thoughts as I'm listening to, to people's lessons and how... Um, it's not on top of, right? It's on top right. of all of 
demand that we have. Yeah. No, if you can, um, it actually, so, so I work, I've worked a lot with, with Finnish educators and basically what you just said is what, I mean, they try to integrate SEL into all of their different lessons. So they're, you know, they're, if they're doing science and they're talking about the mind, you know, a lot of some of the things that they're, that they're building in are some of the things from, from SEL, if they're talking about say parts of the body, then concentrating on that part of the body is a form of mindfulness. And they have, you know, they, they, they build that in so that later on when, you know, we all deregulate at times, you, as you say, you, you could go back to your anchor, which you've established by reading the book as part of your language lesson or your uh, science lesson. Great, great idea. Thank you. Okay, um, who's next? I can go next. Great. Just, um, just keep rolling with it here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so let me share my screen. Um, I don't have any sound, so we're good. Okay, Mitch, can you see that? I can see yes. you. Yep. Okay, we're good. Okay, so, you know, we don't want to keep reinventing the wheel, right? And there is so much great material out there. I'd actually bought this um, unit. So this lesson is from this unit. Just off of Teachers Pay Teachers, I find a lot of really great SEL type connections there, um, especially in the role that I'm in as an assistant principal. You know, I'm uh, all day, every day. I'm working with dysregulated <laughs> kids who have dysregulated moments. And um, so I'm really, this class is very timely and I appreciate everybody's expertise. This is really um great for me applicable so this lesson i think it's like less than seven out of the ten lessons but as you can see it's coping with strong feelings you can see some of these pieces here um when those big feelings is what we call them when those big feelings come what do you, what can you do with them right what are your choices so um i'm just going to kind of skip down here so here's some of the the um, scripting pieces. We're gonna learn about and practice three other ways for handling strong, uncomfortable feelings. So if we don't take care of our feelings, what happens? Well, we say it comes out, right? It always comes out. We say mean things, we get in trouble, we push the other kid down the slide. Um, so yeah. So then it goes on and it um, talks about, we can let our feelings go by naming them, which of course is really, uh, key for kids and adults, really, um, like before you practice, and then by slowing down our breaths, and that's what this first part is, tightening and rel relaxing our muscles, and by talking to ourselves, that positive self-talk, or that reframing, so you're presented with a problem, so it really, um, really aligned nicely with what we've been practicing in this course, so goes into this square breathing, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the, there's star breathing, there's hand breathing, square breathing, <laughs> Mm. <laughs> breathing boards, you know, it's all, it's similar. Um, the ball, you know, that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So, um, it practices that and I'll, there's, um, visuals in here. So I'll just kind of go over the lesson and then we'll look at the visuals. Um, so square breathing and it talks about, I like the way that she frames, you know, um, those big emotions as our bugged feelings, like I'm feeling bugged. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if you can't quite name what it is you're feeling, especially with those youngers, um, even, well, even sometimes with the older ones too, I work in a K-8 school. Or men, men um, especially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, there's some truth to that. I have two boys here. Uh, yeah. And so um, really, if you can't name it oh, right now, because you're just, you know, you're really just regulated, that's fine. You're just feeling bugged. And so there you'll see a bug theme through here. Um, and then this next part is what are some things that we think in our brains and tell ourselves when we're angry? What about the things our brain says when we're worried or we're sad or disappointed? Um, so then, it, for example, if someone calls me a mean name, I might start to feel angry, but I can just tell myself, who cares what he says? I know I'm not that bad. So this is that self-talk piece, that positive um, piece. And then you throw the ball at the, the mad, I'll show you, I'll scroll down. You have a little ball. So this is some of that like kinesthetic piece. And you try and, you know, like the the um fair game we have to knock down the clown <laughs> it's kind of yep. like that with yep. knock down the mad card that you have on a binder clip so everything you need to fully teach this lesson is on here that's why it's 11 pages so it gets a little um so then you practice knocking down your bugged feelings uh so you read these scenarios and they can say oh well here's what i can tell myself instead of right 
Um, so here is when I feel bugged, I can do square breathing. So similar, right? One, two, three, four. And then, um, then these cards were cool. Like as a closing activity to the lesson, you can set these up for kids, you know, like on the carpet or floor so kids can walk. So step on the one, step on the two. You can walk this big square as you practice. Mm. I like that connection piece. Um, so that's what all these are. We'll, we'll go by these really fast. Um, I was telling you, hold three, hold four. So these are the cards um, that you would be knocking down, you know, like those with the ball. So if the scenario you're feeling would be worried and how would you self-talk? So here's um, the scenarios for that self-talk piece. What could you tell yourself who just got a test back and you got a bad grade on it? You know, there's lots of options of, way, of how you could talk to yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm not smart or, you know, all kinds of things. Or it can be, oh, you know what? Um, I could study more for the next one, or I can get some help if I don't understand how to do that. So that that's what all these points are. Um, just different scenarios. I find it's really helpful with kids when I, by the time they make it to me, I mean, they're, they're, you know, fist fighting out at recess kind of a thing. Right. <laughs> so I'm, I all day am with those big blowout pieces. And so it's really, um, it's really hard for them by the time they get to me to reflect on their own actions. So these type of activities where they're reflecting on this anonymous person or this anonymous or the scenario, right? That doesn't necessarily, it connects, but you know, they, it's not their situation. It's not personal. Mm -hmm. That's how I've really been able to get through to kids when they're in that moment. You know, I give them time to calm down and we do all that too. But, um, and so they could be like, yeah, that guy, he should not have done that. He shouldn't have punched that kid at the, you know, it was like, right. yeah, well, okay, let's think about what you did, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So it's kind of that um, depersonalizing is really helpful. And then I like this last piece, which is, a, is I actually took from another lesson in the unit, the, the triggers for your bugged feelings. So this is that preventative piece, right? Mm -hmm. um, so use one color for situations that make you feel a little bugged and then a different color that make you feel very bugged. You know, maybe you do yellow and red or whatever it is, but mm -hmm. then here's, so then it really helps the, the child identify you know, some of those differences. And then it talks about mark where you feel the bugged feeling. So really that self, you know, I feel hot, you know, here, or my face feels, you know, pink or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, or my fists, you know, we, the kids, the kids I work with talk a lot about that. Um, so, and then, so it's basically what are, what are the alerts your body is sending you to signal, Hey, you're about to explode. And mm -hmm. if you recognize that ahead of time, then maybe we can stop that from happening. You can go get help or help yourself. So. And do you get a chance to follow up with the kids also? Yeah, like absolutely. And I do, I make a point of, you know, once we've gone through the whole restorative process um, and I'm able to reintegrate them into society, which is kind of mm -hmm. a joke I make, but bring them right. back into their class, right. Which is their community. Mm -hmm. um, then I go back and, you know, if I have time in the day, I'll go back and just check on them. Or if it's severe, I'll check on them for like a couple days, um, a week for a couple weeks. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm um, just talking to them. Hey, how you feeling? Are you feeling bugged? How's it, you know, that kind of thing. And so. No, it's, that's cool because you're giving them vocabulary for a lot of different feelings and mm -hmm. um and you know it's the it's associating the action with the feeling with uh, with other possible feelings f when the situation occurred yeah. and um and you know imprinting that on their minds gives them the tools hopefully es especially if you if you're able to do that you know over time gives, gives yeah. them the tools to start regulating their behavior. Yeah. I mean, I will say again, in my position, I mean, I see all the, we call them the high flyers, right? I mean, we know what those are, but it's like, you know, those kids that go right to that red zone and, and yeah. go to those extreme behaviors. So I guess it's fortunate that, that I do see them so often because then I, I follow up on those lessons. Okay. Right. Last time we talked about this, we're here again, you know, <laughs> so let's, let's build on that. And so there is some, uh, let's call it natural follow-up. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Not the time you want, but you know there is that opportunity at least to build those skills over time. And it must be a, a sense, you know, a sense of satisfaction when you see the kids starting to change. Also, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, Christina, oh. is the bug thing your whole theme? 
Um, it's the the unit. Yeah, is the whole theme. Um, the her name is at the bottom of the papers, but it's the responsive counselor. So if you just go teachers pay teachers and put that in, um, you would be Have able to find. Have you ever it. heard of the Bug and the Wish book? No, I haven't. I the best one I found so far this fall. Has anybody okay. else heard of Bug and a Wish? It's um it's one of my favorites. I'm so excited to find it. Um, it's it um it bugs me when you mm -hmm. and I wish you would. Mm -hmm. So um when I'm having trouble with some kids, I'll say, Did you give them a bug and a wish? And then they can try to work things out themselves just from this little book that I found. Yeah. It's on Amazon, Bug and a Wish. Love it. I wrote it down. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try that. My kids are adults, but I'm going to try that with them. Um, okay. And, um, so I think we have time. Well, we certainly have time for one more, um, lesson plan. And so, you know, it'd be great to, if everybody had a chance to go, but, um, but who, who hasn't gone who would be willing to go? Now? I would be willing to go. Okay, okay. great. Book, so. Okay. But I'm not very tech savvy. So let's see if I can figure out how to share my screen. And if you can't, I can get Will it. Will you share it? Sure. Okay. You'll just have to tell me when to advance. Okay. Okay. Um, let me just see. So there it is. Okay, so every so you see it, everybody. Anchor chart. That's like the last one. Can oh, you, right, oh, of course. Okay. Uh, can you? No. Yep. Okay, so I was like trying to wrap my brain around all of this, and I wanted to. My daughter asks why all the time, um, so I created the lesson for her and her first grade classmates, um, but I really wanted to explain at a first grade level, like what is going on with the brain mm -hmm. and why, how mindfulness works because of the way your brain is built or functions. So um, the target for the lesson is to be able to name a mindfulness strategy and identify a good time to use it. Um, next one. And I thought like a good introduction would just be for the kids to kind of turn and talk with each other. Um, I'm sorry, I've got a sick baby. So he just, oh. maybe, um, maybe he'll let me finish. It's okay, baby. Um, so kind of brainstorm together about like when they've ever felt out of control, afraid, fearful, um, and what they did, and then lead into the conversation about, next slide. Yeah, oops. Yeah, okay. Um, mindfulness strategies. So this one is um, a go noodle one and it's called mindless to mindful. And I liked that one because it had um, a like brief explanation about what mindfulness is, but it also covered all the senses. So it's like, it talked about breathing. It talked about like looking at something. It talked about listening to something. So it covered like a lot of different senses. Um, so I wanted to talk about that with the kids and have them watch that as like a quick intro to mindfulness. And then I found this really, really cool book about how the brain works hmm. and it's called Rosie's brain. It's got a link to it. Um, but it, so Rosie wakes up in the morning and she had plans to play Frisbee with a friend. She goes downstairs and her mom says, oh, we have piano lessons and Rosie throws a fit and throws a bagel on the floor and has a meltdown and her mom calls it flipping out. So Rosie flips out and her mom sends her up to her room and she looks over in the corner and there's this little version of Rosie crying in the corner in a laundry basket, throwing clothes, screaming. And she's like, who are you? She's like, well, my name's Amy, the amygdala. And it <laughs> just talks about like, the amygdala is um, the uh, reason that she has fight or flight. And the, Amy's like, well, do you remember that one time you hit Peter because he knocked over your blocks? That was because of me. <laughs> and the um, hippocampus, mm -hmm. 
Doc, or Mrs. Pickle, because it's the shape of a pickle, and she comes and talks about how um, she's in charge of memories, and do you remember that one time, and um, talks to Amy, and then PFC shows up, the prefrontal cortex, and she's like this hippie lady with a peace sign on her t-shirt, and she talks about um, how Amy, or Rosie's mom had been talking about breathing strategies, and how to calm down she needs to use these breathing strategies and it's just a really great intro to those three segments of the brain mm -hmm. and explains each one's function um in a really really kid-friendly language so i just thought it was just i was so excited when i finally and, and is the video before. somebody reading the book yes yep it's wow. the author, mm -hmm. author reading the book and it's a really good video um like close up of the pictures. My four year old watched it and loved it and watched it again. Hmm. So I wanted to share that with the kids and then have them kind of turn and talk about what strategies they noticed Rosie using, along with the strategies that we learned from the Go Noodle video, and then do kind of an anchor chart that we would build on throughout the year. So the anchor chart would be like the last piece for, for the day, but um, just kind of like different breathing the Rosie uses um she called it like balloon breathing so she is like imagining um blowing up the balloon in her stomach and then deflating the balloon in her stomach and blowing it up again so mm -hmm. that would be my lesson wow I love that that book and video yeah it's really cool yeah I think um i'm gonna have to you know watch the video and or read the book or you know possibly both probably both because the idea of being able to explain those three parts of the brain in kid friend friendly language is brilliant yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah I, I i i can't wait to read it um any any other comments anybody else Sarah, very great lesson, and I'm excited to buy this book too, Rosie. Yeah. Awesome. I know, I have Thank so you. many, and I've already finished my Christmas shopping. So. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. Any any other any other comments? So I know it's um so it's we you know uh, we did not get to everybody, um, but. Um, every you know you all have the lessons on the spreadsheet so that you can access them um you know thank you you know Brittany, riley rita molly um alicia dawn linda amy and christina and sarah uh for um you know for actually getting on air and um and sharing and uh so i just you know thank thank you all for uh joining in the class i um you know i i I, I hope that you found the class really valuable. My guess is that you found each other's lessons even more valuable than the than 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 the class. So, because these these are these are great great lessons and um, really practical uses of how to how to control the brain. Uh, I know that um, you know Tammy's the one who's who's basically going to be sending you all um, the professional development credit. Uh, in March, we're going to have an advanced class. Um, so um, we're having another, uh, you know, class one in January. So, you know, Tammy will, will be sending out a, a registration sheet for that. And then from the people who took those two classes, um, hopefully some of you come back for the advanced class in, in March. So, um, you know, I hope, uh, I hope you have a great rest of the year. And um, just thank you again for, uh, for, for joining. Hey, and Mitch, can I just take a second to thank you for an excellent course? I, we get so much positive feedback from this course and you just make it wonderful. And I just want to say, I'm so grateful for you that you do the course. And cause I know we don't pay you to do it. So I just want you to know, I really appreciate the opportunity for our teachers to, to learn from you. So Mitch, thank you. Can we just thank say you. thanks to Mitch? Oh, thank, thank you, thank Mitch. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, and thank you all. holidays, everyone. Yeah. Thank you for making everything so laid back too. You know, a lot of us aren't in the classroom and I never felt, felt like I could just fit right in. So Great. good. Appreciate good. that. 
Um, okay. Will there be yeah. an email about the March class? You know what, Lindsay, we'll make sure when I release the PD enroller link, which will happen in, in the next week, Mitch and I'll, is it, can we commit Mitch to making sure that we email everybody that's taken the first course? Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So yes, Lindsay. Thank you, Mitch. Okay. And thank, thank you. Cal. Thank you for showing the kids too. Oh. And the puppy. And the puppy. And the puppy. <laughs> yes. So fun. Thanks, you guys. Okay. Have a very happy holiday. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay, bye.